Hello everyone. Now, before I get into the review, which you've probably seen the title, so you know which one I figure I'm going to review for you this time, uh, I want to say happy 2013 to all of my subscribers. Now, I've saved the figure which I'm going to be reviewing for you this time as more of a special one. It was one of my most favourite figures growing up from the G1 line. Um, but I've saved this one for this review because this is my 200th, if I put my teeth in, my 200th uh, subscriber review. Uh, and I have the Fallen 835 to thank for that. He was my 200th sub. Now, I found him through Rat Trap 25, uh, Phil. Um, he'd made a comment on uh, this lad's. Uh, sort of like 100th subscriber uh, review so it's kind of apt that I was his 101st again I put my teeth in, can't speak tonight 101st subscriber and he's my 200th so that kind of is a weird coincidence but anyway uh, I'll get to the figure, and I'll bring the box up first. I'll show you an empty box. It is good old classic G1 Jetfire. Now, obviously, in the cartoon, he was called Skyfire. I'm sure a lot of old fans know the sort of problem why there's two names, but for any of the younger viewers who are into Transformers, I'll explain it. He was called Skyfire in the cartoon series in G1. Now this was down to copyright laws as far as I'm aware. Now the toy you're looking at is Jetfire. Um, this issue has also been sort of done if you're familiar with the classics toy. Um, the Skyfire character in the cartoons had a face and looked you know, substantially different than the toy. Um, whereas of course Jetfire's got a visor and now on the classics line they've given him a helmet that you can put over the head so you can have it either way and he's a kind of mishmash between the two um, so it kind of fills that gap and he's quite a nice figure but not one I've actually picked up one I'm sort of going to look out for uh, but he goes for a packet so I'll see if I'm picking up cheap somewhere anyway getting back to our G1 review uh, really great figure now this and the whole copyright issues came in because I believe this was classed as a Macross toy originally and Hasbro brought the rights out to it and repackaged it obviously as their own as they did with a couple of the other uh, Transformers and um, Roadbuster and Whirl from the Wreckers um, they were again other toy lines they brought in now as I say, I think this is classed as a Macross and it would have been the Valkyrie. And they came in different sizes in their original form and just plain grey. And of course, Hasbro gave it a sprinkling of colour and personality for the cartoon. But obviously they couldn't use that image in the cartoon because they'd get sued and they'd have to pay royalties. So that's why you've got the differences. Now, as to the actual toy excuse me you've got some lovely G1 box art really great artwork on these early boxes um, this was from the early line probably from about I think it's 85 86 um, he was one of the earlier ones and you'll know that he's an early one because we're not turn the box around it's got the original first wave sort of box art on the back where Optimus Prime's fighting Starscream and that Megatron's nowhere to be seen as far as I can tell. Oh no, there he is. I think that's him down the bottom there. Um, and obviously you've got Soundwave Ravage. So you're talking the main G1 characters here. Um, usual thing, Tech Spectre Decoder, Robot Points, all the usual bells and whistles on these old boxes. Now I'll bring his Tech Specs in. And let that, and get that right. Let that focus. And if you want to pause it and read his little bit of uh, blurb, save me reading it out to you. And you only got to worry about it if you really want to know some background detail on him. 
Now, that's the box pretty much covered, other than to say the fact, obviously, if you're picking up one of these, you know, you're going to see a bit of wear on the edges. I mean, even I get that, sort of, even though I've stored them reasonably carefully. Um, the other thing to watch out for, of course, is the plastic on the front and the polystyrene inserts. Now, mine, obviously, this guy was out from when I brought it. The box got put away, um, and he only really got put back in his box when I ended up sort of getting a bit older and I put them away and put them in sort of storage in my cupboards. Um, so, if you're picking one up, be careful of the polystyrene, obviously, if somebody's had it sort of in and out of there, it could get damaged, but I'm lucky in the fact that it's reasonably well intact and not dented or anything like that. Now the only thing I can't show you with this guy is actually his instruction manual, which for whatever reason, I normally always put them in their boxes and I put them away, but for whatever reason that one's done a walkie somewhere, so it's probably in amongst another transformer, um, who knows. I might probably turn it up one day when I get um, myself sorted out and get them displayed. But for now, it's gone. Uh, so we'll get to the main figure, I think, first. Now, because you get two polystyrene inserts in the box, that's to hold two sections of the toy. Now, basically, the main section is this lovely red and white jet. Now. Even in this light, he is showing a little bit of discoloration. Now, I have done my technique, and I have told a few people about it before. But I've done the uh, hydrogen peroxide on this guy. I had to strip him right down to sort of like component parts, taking all the metal bits out so they didn't react and go rusty in the solution and that. And if you want to check out the reviews on how to do it, um, feel free to sort of go back and look on my other vids about how to use the peroxide. Um, I didn't actually show doing this because to be honest it would be so complicated. Taking him to part is a nightmare because there's so many bits. Now that was done quite a long time ago. Now he has rediscoloured slightly but not greatly. You can see a little bit of cream and white difference on the leg parts at the back there and a little bit between say the wings and this part but this part would never have got discoloured as much as the main parts because of the position they were in in robot mode. Um, but bearing in mind, and I'll give you something as a colour comparison, when I started sort of like trying to sort him out and using the peroxide, he didn't look like this. He was that colour. He was literally yellow. Um, it had gone like if somebody had been smoking cigarettes around him for about 10 years, let's put it that way, the sun had made him yellow. And he went from that, getting back to pretty close to being back to white, um, but good enough for me, I think. I mean, bearing in mind this is my original one, so I don't care if he's absolutely mint, because this is the toy that I played with as a kid and absolutely loved. Uh, the jet mode, this is the basic jet mode, I should explain. Um, it's fantastic. I mean, it's a great jet. It's obviously, you know, you've got the kibble, you know there's arms there. I've left his hands out, and there is a reason for that as well. Um, but, yeah, there's obviously arms, there's legs, and there's a head there. So, pretty obvious. Um, one other little minor thing, and this isn't something that's happened recently. You'll notice in that side there's a hole there. Now, on this side you've got a white sort of cover that fits inside which covers like the pin mechanism what's in there that was missing from new now I remember that being missing and sort of thinking oh that's a pain but being that this was a present and obviously I was young I didn't care because I was playing with it so yeah a little bit of a pain but then again that always tells me that's my one um, as you can see he's got some pretty nice paint apps on there with the black and red and um, lovely stickers with the Autobot logo on the front there, nice big one. Um, but yeah, really great jet mode. Now, I always used to have it so these headers were this way around with the guns pointing forward, almost like a underbelly, sort of like anti-aircraft well, anti turret. 
I'm thinking more like a bomber, but almost like a ground attack turret sort of thing. Um, but whether that's supposed to be that way round, or you can flick them round and have them that way if you want to make it more streamlined, up to you. Now, as I say, that is the basic jet mode. Now, he's got an extra sort of like powered up mode, let's sort of say, and I'll move the camera down so I can see this in a bit more detail. Now at this point, I'll leave that as such and just put it to the side and I'll show you the accessories will come with him. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you've got a lot of red pieces of armour which fit all over his body. Now the first one of the main pieces is this little sort of backpack part. Now to go with that, you get a left and a right hand jet thruster like so and they've got sticker details on all over them now i have actually got a replo label set for this i haven't actually bothered to do them yet because i wanted to see how the peroxide would go and how it would last in case i want to sort of re-dip any of it and take it apart again just improve it um, which i might do so i haven't bothered to relabel him yet so if any of the labels look a little bit peely you know it's Quite a few don <laughs> quite a few years old. I was going to say donkey's years old, but that would make me a donkey. So anyway, getting to the, <laughs> the toy review, um, you take the thrusters. They've got holes there on the inside. Now, I'm not ever sure why it had the hole there. I could never fathom out what that reason was, but it's this hole in the near the back of the thruster what you want and you've got a sort of like a long peg that needs to plug into them so you plug them into there now obviously if you pick up one of these bear in mind this plastic is quite old and you can hear it's a little bit creaky so use a bit of care and I shall say I'm going to use a great deal of care when I start putting this onto the figure because this hasn't been back on him for probably getting on about 19 years so I'm going to be quite careful now the thing to look out for and I'll show you why on one of the other pieces in a minute you've got little sort of clippy sort of lugs on these parts and obviously they clip on the main body now they're obviously going to be prone to breaking now you do get two what fit on his forearm and if I show you them like so, you see what I'm on about with the clips when they break. Now you can see also the lighter part of their stress marks. Now these parts do come apart at the rear and have this removable section which does aid putting them on and off. But obviously when I was younger, you tend to just force it on and off. And obviously that's what did that. They've been like it a long time. When I put them on, I'll show you how to put them on so it's a little bit safer. Uh, but yeah, you get two almost like underarm cannon thrustery sort of things and they just fit on his forearms you also get some flares shall we say uh, extra armor for his legs uh, you get a side panel and you get another clip panel which again has i believe in two sections not so so you get a clip and i don't know what you quite, quite call that looks like a canoe if you lay it down, down on its back um, but yeah they fit together like so and then these pegs go into these holes on the armour and again you've got two horrible little clips which you've got to watch because obviously they'll snap off if you're too rough and luckily I don't think any of them have ever come off you know although it has got a little bit of stress wear little marks if I bring that in you just see them maybe just a little light bit there and um, so obviously as i say be careful with them if you pick up one of these guys as finding complete nice bits of armor is probably a little bit difficult although you often see the bits i bet the lugs are often broken um getting to the final parts uh he does come with a really nice gun now as i got this out to review and even though i'd done the peroxide on him in the past i hadn't got the parts out before and I got his gun out and then I realised something. Right at the end, there should be like a little sort of I don't know what you call it, a compensator 
I suppose in a real gun um, like a flash hider on the end of there now it's not very long it's just like a little cone that fits on about that long um, but mine's not on there and it's not in the box and I seem to remember when I was younger because this sort of scope bit moved I thought oh I wonder if there's a clip sort of mechanism like the old launchers well, if I could get into there, I could put a spring in and find a missile and I could launch things, you know, sort of out the gun. Which I think, to some degree, may have been what it was originally designed to do, because the fact it's got a loose movable part and there was a hole at the front. So, of course, I did the usual thing as a kid. Prize it off and open it up. Couldn't get into it all because it's stuck together. Gave up and then when I went to put the nose cone part back on the gun um, on the end of the barrel it broke into bits so yeah I seem to remember that happening and it was a right pain but of course when it got put away I forgot all about it till I've got it out to review it so I'll have to find another gun at some point anyway but it doesn't really stop you seeing what it's like uh, it's pretty basic sort of moulding but quite nicely moulded quite a nice design a little bit like a missile if you take off the extra bits and even that had a sticker app on each side to match him so yeah not a bad sort of gun and it fits in his hands quite nicely um or I should say hand and i'll get to that in a minute and last but not least is a clip now this clip as far as i can tell is to clip the gun to his arm now I can't really see a lot of point in that because he holds it in his hands but uh, what you do is you put the grip of the gun in the side there and it just holds onto the arm on its own with just a bit of tension um, absolutely no point in having it to be quite honest um, people charge a fortune for this well say a fortune it's more than it's worth let's put it that way uh, on places like eBay and that if you're a completionist and you want it for your jet fire, you know, who am I to say that it's wrong to pick it up? But if you want to pick a jet fire up to display, you really don't need this bit. And playing through the nose for a part you don't need is a bit of a waste of your money, to be honest. You could, you know, I think they go for about 10, 20 quid, something like that. Go and buy yourself another figure for that. You know, I mean, what's that going to actually do for you? Um, obviously, I'm not going to get rid of mine because it does go with the figure and obviously this was mine anyway so I'm not about to sort of like just sell it or give it away but you don't need it if you're looking to pick up this figure anyway that's it now putting the bits on to him well we'll go back to the jet oh and one thing I should also point out with this guy is reasonably heavy because he has got some uh, sort of die cast metal parts to it and talking of die cast metal not many transformers and if you flick this little switch at the front have metal undercarriage the whole undercarriage is made of die cast metal and even has rolling metal wheels quality wise this figure left a lot of the other G1 line sort of standing especially some of the later G1 line let's put it that way all of them are sprung loaded which makes it a nightmare when you're taking it apart and putting it back together again because you've got to get all the springs connected up correctly um, again rear wheels nicely done undercarriage and again metal rolling wheels I'll bring that in so you can see a bit better detail on them as you can see they're, I assume they're made of possibly stainless steel on the actual wheels because they ain't rusted it's like an alloy and possibly stainless and they're really good really great sort of sturdy I mean they're not going to snap off let's put it that way you can sit him down on the wheels and he sits there as he should as a real jet would so yeah really nice feature really good as you can see on the front one <laughs> even some decent molding detail into it and quite sort of delicately molded as well when you consider that he's actually made out of metal so yeah another great feature of him now I tuck them all away just push those bits shut they might pop out due to transformation as I'm doing it because these little catches can be a little bit temperamental but bear with me 
putting his armor on well the easiest way to do it is to transform him but I'm going to endeavor to do it in his plane mode because obviously you can see the armor in plane mode as well now first off we'll take a leg now just from the fact of knowledge of which way round he goes this is the part that goes with this leg which is his right leg I don't know are they listed yes they have got inside if you're in doubt they have got if I can get that into shot in the light they've got an R on so you know which is right and left and I'm assuming yep that so have the back parts as well and if I can get that into the light you should be able to see right at the bottom there at the back and that little R so you can't really go wrong if you was buying these off the internet you can always ask the seller you know to have a look and see if it's a left or a right part if you're unsure but at least you can check now to fit these you've got this little fin which would be under the jet now these little clips fit either side of that fin like so so that stops it moving up and down and by turning it that way you can see on the back side I bring that in a bit more closer you get the two holes at the back now that's what you've got aim for with those two pins and if you line them up correctly bear in mind I haven't done this for 19 odd years uh, there we go we just push together <laughs> oh, this is the lovely part of doing something you haven't done for so many years it's just popped up from where it should be on that fin now obviously you've got to be careful when it comes to those little tabs again as I said earlier and that's that's it so it's all connected on that just pushes together and it holds together quite nicely and it creates a thicker chunkier leg with some extra armor now if I hold that up that's what it looks like in plain mode and as you can see it's quite beefier than the other side now I'll quickly do the other one if you just bear with me exactly the same method and again these have got left on them so or L for left I should say so you can't mix them up there you go so quite simple and straightforward to actually get it fitted on and that's the back part done that's the legs now for the arms we sure if I fold the legs down out of the way again I would normally do this in robot mode but I want to show you the plain mode when it's complete again now this is the broken one but it will still clip on as long as it's got one clip take this one and this is listed one and two so there are they are actually done as handed um, to be quite honest I can't remember which one's which and as such it doesn't actually matter now the reason why the hands are out now they can be temperamental and quite sticky and you've got to watch out in case they break now these haven't broken but I've left them out because they're a bit sticky and also for another reason if you transform this guy with the armor on you can't get to the tabs which actually move them in and out so as a thing to a collector who might want to display it and might want to transform him leave them out you'll be saving yourself some heartache I mean I've took this all apart and obviously when I renovated him so I know what the mechanism is like in there and you don't want to sort of muck around breaking it because once it's gone it's gone and then you're going to have to buy another figure just to get the hands and then they could be broken and you're back to square one so bear that in mind and as I say for the sake of the transformation anyway you may as well just leave them out it doesn't really detract too much from jet mode and to be honest you're going to display them in robot mode anyway probably probably now this clip part which goes at the back if you see the one what's in on that one 
goes that way round. So you need to position, and this is the fiddly bit, the clip at the back of the forearm and you want to hook the clip under where his hand is and then locate the pin on the inside. Now you've heard that clip, so that's it going in and as you can see it just fits on. It just sits on quite nicely clipped under the fist and clipped at the back of the forearm. Now obviously when this was new, a little bit more flex in the plastic, you can actually put that together and sort of put it at the back and just flick it on and that's probably what that got broken. Um, as I say, as a collector and as a bit of a warning to everybody, if you're picking one of these up as an old figure, the plastic's going to have got weaker. It's better to do it this way than end up having to chase around eBay trying to find missing bits and broken bits. Right, so I just do the same again. It is a bit fiddly, but it is worth doing it this way because as I say better that than have a load of broken parts and that's it so that's back on right just <coughs> uh, excuse me again so that's that of the forearm parts positioned so again you've sort of built up the inner part of the jet and it looks a little bit beefier again now, moving the wings out to the sides, where does the backpack go? Well, this is an interesting part with this mode. Now, I do like it where he's got the tail fins up. It does look quite a nice jet mode like that. But what looks better is if you fold these down, and be careful again with these because this is like on a clipping sort of joint. You can hear the lovely old plastic, and you can just sort of tell one day that's just going to snap that's why you don't use them that often um, you fold them down and fold that over and the one really risky part that you can't do any other way is the fact that these have got a clip on round under here and you've got to put that bit on first you've got no other way of doing it so you're either going to hear me cry in a minute or just be pleased that it's just popped on it does flex slightly as it goes on. Now are you going to play ball or are you going to break? Uh, I think we are there. That's it. <sighs> now that's a relief. It's gone on and it's okay. So it just clips under the back part there and then just folds over and then the two little pegs just sort of clip on either side. And that is his sort of like beefed up, I suppose you'd class it almost like his apex armour sort of version. And as anyone who's familiar with the old back box art, with the old transformer boxes, not the one he's actually in, but the later ones knows, that's the image you see as he's coming up, firing a missile strangely towards Grimlock, but for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, that's the typical look of jet fire and closer to the sky fire that you know from the cartoons and again that is a fantastic jet mode um, back when this came out that just looked so gorgeous and to be honest they could have made this guy Optimus Prime I know obviously we're all familiar with Prime as a truck and all the rest of it from the cartoon and that but as a toy this thing well it beat Prime it beat Megatron I mean, in my sort of heart of the characters I love, this guy to me, as a toy, not so much the character in the cartoons, although I did like him, um, but as an actual toy line figure, this guy to me is on a par with the best of the G1 line. If you're going to buy G1, this is a figure you want, because although he's actually based on a toy line, which isn't, anything to do with Transformers as such, um, mind you a lot of the original ones weren't, uh, this build quality wise, materials he's made with and just the general quality of it is just lovely, I mean if you can buy a mint one where he hasn't discoloured at all, uh, you'll be lucky in one way but also so worth getting, 
you actually feel like you've got a really good toy in your hand. It, there's some, some, uh, some pretty much some, some yeah, put my teeth in, some substantial weight to him. Um, yeah, so as a even in his jet mode, on that alone, he's worth having. But of course, you're here to see his transformation now. As for that, it's pretty simple. It's G1. Take the legs and release them. And this time, you want the top hip parts to come with it. And as you can see, as I said, the stickers are a little bit discoloured. They're donkey's years old. You've got to accept that. When it's Replo labelled, they'll be lovely in red, like the uh, armour and that as well. So it will look lovely when I get round to doing that. Now these fold rounds, and they've got a sprung pin on each side. Again, something I've had to take apart and put back together again. Now, on the sides of the nose of the jet, you'll see an indent each side. And they connect and clip, clip into there. Now, as this is old, it has a tendency, when it does that, to release the rear undercarriage. So you just need to pop that back in. And that is the one that's the most temperamental when you transform it. Now, you basically got a jet with a pair of legs sticking out the end. So I'm going to just lift the camera up slightly because this guy is pretty tall. Now, for the rest of the legs, the transformation is basically splitting the dark grey strokes or black plastic parts at the, the bottom apart to give him high heels, a little bit camp. But they're pretty good sturdy feet, and even as much as the transformation's done already, he can stand up. Um, the legs, the lower sections are made of metal, so there's good balance. The upper sections are plastic, with obviously die cast parts where it actually joins the nose. The nose is die cast as well, so you've got some reasonable weight and stability to the figure already. Now, getting to the upper half you've got to bring this section with the black and red down slightly like so that releases the back section now before you move that where the arms are you'll see that there's i bring that in closer there's a metal section here die cast metal connected to two, the two arms you have to push from the inside and you can lift up a little white cover there to aid getting into there you push them from the other side and they release and immediately fall to the sides like so again quite simple engineering but it works terrifically at this point you want to fold the head up like so flip the guns through as well bring that whole section is on like a double hinged, again another metal part that's double hinged. You've got to bring that over. Now you'll see a little peg there, and that's got to line up into that hole there. And you swing it over like so, with everything staying in that same position. And it just clips together, and then hey presto, and as if by magic, you've got a transformer. Now, at this point I should point out to you his backpack swings down like that. Now don't think uh oh something wrong there. What you've got to do is just nudge it up, push his wings down neatly behind his back, like so. There you go. That holds them up. So there's no actual clipping joint there, it just hold, holds together with one clip in the back and the rest of it's just loose. And but once it's all put together it's as solid as anything. Now getting to the last bit, so all you've got to do is turn these forearms around. And that's it. A really simple transformation, but quite a complicated robot. Now, when I say complicated, there are not many G1s that have shoulder articulation with clicking joints, shoulder articulation sideways with, artic with clicking joints, Elbow joints, elbow joints that can turn. Obviously the same on the other arm. On each leg, if I try and get hold of him and show you, you've got forward movement. 
You've got limited back movement because of the wings being tucked in at the back, but you have got knee articulation. Obviously that would go both ways, but obviously that would be kind of weird. So you can actually pose this guy in yeah, a few poses. I'd say not quite the easiest, obviously most people just have him stood up, but there's not many G ones you can actually get in that position. Simply for the fact that most of them don't even have legs or can bend. Um, but he is probably, I'd have to say without doubt, he's probably the most articulated G1 character you can actually get in toy form. Um, and as I say, he's a really great toy because of that feature. Now the weird thing, which I've said to you before, Closed fist hand. Why they didn't just make them both, like the open one, I really don't know. Now, I suppose this is where the clip comes in, because obviously if you fit the gun there and you want to put it on that arm, you can fit it. You've got to be careful that armour. You can fit it on like so, and it will sort of stay there, and you can have an arm cannon. Um, Again, I don't really see the point. I think it would work either way around. So you put the gun on the outside as well by just turning it around. Again, you know, what's the point? Because do away with that, you just put it in his hand. And there you go. Great figure. What's wrong with that? Now, if they've given him two hands, what could do that? You could just hold it in either hand anyway. Um, so a little bit weird. Now, he's actually probably, and you will probably never see this again on any G1, he's probably the only one that A, looks exactly like his box art, if you flick his guns up to the top, but that looks like weird ears, so I've always had mine pointing forward. But he's probably the only one, if I do that, uh, turn his arm that way and bend it around like so move that leg back and that leg forward and like that he's about the only one that you're ever actually going to get in about the same pose as the box art that alone makes him worth having um, there are no others as far as I'm aware, that because of their obviously artistic license when they do the box art, there are none that look like their box art um, in so much of their poses. Most of them you're lucky if you can bend the knees um, or even the elbows, let's be honest. But here you can. So, one of the best G1 Transformers, and the reason why I've saved him for the 200th subscriber review you need this in your collection there is no other way to put it if you like transformers and you're into g1 you need this guy if he had electronics in him he'd have been probably about the best toy in the 80s let's put it that way maybe a firing missile as well i know some people hate them because you lose them but it would have just given them something else as well which would have been quite fun but there you go, so that is G1 Jetfire, and to sort of sign off this review, I should say thank you for everybody that's subbed to me over the last, well, well it's over a year now, uh, probably a couple of years nearly, um, yeah, thank you for everybody who's subbed, be it the most recent or the first, uh, I've enjoyed meeting all of you guys and going into 2013 I'm still not giving up don't worry I wasn't about to say anything like that I shall obviously be booty in um, once the season gets going and I shall no doubt be showing you lots of bits of plastic that I've picked up um, maybe making some of you jealous and bitch at me uh, but hopefully to entertain and maybe inform a little bit as well um, obviously I've still got some G1s to go yet, I've still got others which I haven't even got to yet and I shall review them as and when I find them 
sort of able to get them out and do the time. Now, as this review is probably getting seriously long, I shall sign off and say thank you for watching. Please feel free to comment. Uh, if this is the first review you've seen, please feel free to subscribe and uh, drop me a line. Thanks for watching and I shall see you again for more reviews in 2013.